Alors, euh, bonsoir tout le monde. J'espère que vous allez bien. Euh, je, je voudrais vous parler d'abord de notre situation en ce moment, parce que la situation en Irlande euh, devient absolument critique. Hein. Il faut vraiment rester, euh, suivre les consignes données par le gouvernement. So we really need to um, follow the, the direction given by the government et uh, les, les professionnels de, qui travaillent dans le, dans le secteur de santé hein, and those that work in, in health, ok? Il faut rester chez soi, you need to stay at home. Il ne faut pas sortir sauf en cas d'urgence, en, en cas de besoin. Um, you shouldn't go out unless it's really necessary. Um, don't, don't be congregating in groups of people. Um, it's not just young people, even though young people are getting a lot of rap for it. It's all ages. Um, moi, j'ai regardé uh, la télé l'autre soir et uh, j'étais vraiment outré. Hein? J'étais outré de voir uh, tant de monde ensemble. Um, I, was, I was astounded to so many people together. So I would ask that you, you keep your social distancing. It's really, really important because the situation is getting really, really critical, okay? Um, so for tonight, um, things kind of will continue here. Um, there was something sent up by the Department of Education today to say, as far as they're aware, everything is going ahead. So I need you to still have it in your frame of mind that we are preparing for the junior cert and we're preparing for the leaving cert, okay? So nothing has changed from the point of view of the department. Um, obviously, the oral has been cancelled. That had to happen, okay, because of the, the dates and everything. But we're rolling ahead with the, we envisage that there will be exams for both junior and leaving cert, okay? So bearing that in mind, um, what I want to do with you this evening is I'm going to do the diary from the 2016 paper. And the reason I've chosen this diary is because they give you quite a lot of information in the instructions, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to, to go with that. And then afterwards, I'm going to go through writing a sample paragraph for junior cert students. And we're going to look at a sample um, on describing your area. Now, if you're in fifth year, and you're doing French, I would advise that you tune in to the either fifth year or transition year. I'd advise that you stay for the junior cert one as well because there's some handy vocabulary and you know just just to bear with us on that. Okay, so if I start with the leaving cert, so I'm firstly going to read what they asked. Then I'm going to look at general things that you should do for a diary. Then I'm going to go through the body of a diary. Now, I'm not going to go through it, you know, line by line. I'm going to give you like extracts from it because I'm going to be putting it on in the comment section after the live, okay? So don't worry, I will be putting it up. The second thing is if you are a member of either the Leaving Cert or the teacher, plan you will find these under a diary section okay so you know you can you can go there you'll find them in pdf but for the rest of you don't worry i'm going to be putting it on in the comments after the live talking about the comments if you have anything that you'd like to ask suggestions whatever look just type away and i'll get to those as well okay so there's absolutely no problem i welcome any comments and suggestions okay so how the diary started, okay, here it is, all right. It said, vous avez passé vos vacances en famille dans un camping. So you've spent your holidays as a family at a campsite. Quel désastre, what a disaster. Tout était affreux, everything was awful. Les installations, the facilities, la nourriture, tout, everything. Um, la nourriture is food. Même le temps était mauvais. Even the weather was bad. See? Weather, weather, weather. You have to know your weather. De retour chez vous, qu'est-ce que vous notez à ce sujet dans votre journal intime? So, de retour chez vous. So, you have returned. Be very careful of that because they are actually situating the time here for you, okay? So, that's really, really important. Um, de retour chez vous, qu'est-ce que vous notez à ce sujet dans votre journal intime? So, what do you write about this subject in your diary? So, remember, with all diary entries, you've got to say to yourself, okay, is this a positive diary entry or a negative? Are they looking for my opinion? Is it something that I'm going to have to just talk about that they've given me instruction? And this falls into the latter, okay? It's very negative. 
and it's it's basically they're telling you the points that you've to cover but a lot of it then is how you're going to interpret it okay and that's the beauty of a diary entry it's personal writing it's personal to you okay so that's really really important so how i started it is I, as you start every diary entry sorry i'm just clicking here there's just something a few things pop up um so what i'm the first thing you do is you tell us what happened where it happened and the consequences okay but in this particular diary entry they were very very clear you had to talk about les installations you had to talk about la nourriture you had to talk about the weather okay so there were three things that you really had to make reference to and that's how they grade you as well the examiners right they look at you know they have um they have their marking scheme and they say well did you hit all the points that were covered in this would be the stimulus material when they talk about stimulus material it's basically the question that you were given all right or it could be a picture or it could be something like that that's the stimulus material did you deal with all the points in the stimulus material so here i said you always start with share journal and journal is masculine so it's c-h-e-r again don't worry i'm putting this up okay this is just for you to maybe hear it as well so it'll be nice for you to to hear it'll be good for your listening okay quel soulagement je suis heureux or heureuse d'être de retour chez moi so quel soulagement what a relief je suis heureuse d'être de retour chez moi i am delighted to be home to be back home now that's important because remember they said vous venez uh, de retour chez vous qu'est-ce que vous notez so you have to make references that you are back home um Je viens de passer deux semaines horribles dans un camping. Boom. I have just spent two horrible weeks in a campsite. You've situated the problem. You've kind of said, in a nutshell, this is why I'm so angry, right? Um, <clears throat> le camping était tout à fait honteux. So the campsite was a total disgrace. Était tout à fait honteux. If you don't have that kind of vocabulary, you could just say, le camping était terrible. Or le camping n'était pas confortable. All right? Just to have something to write, okay? Um, c'est, and now I added a few things. Now, of course, I'm, I can add a few things. And a lot of the time, you find that students that add a little bit here and there, they will do quite well, okay? It's just giving more emphasis. So I said, c'est à éviter à tout prix. It is to be avoided at all costs, right? Then I said, le camping a été mal entretenu et très sale. So the campsite was badly maintained and very dirty. La piscine était très petite. So la piscine would be one of the facilities. Et elle avait besoin d'une grosse rénovation. And it was in need of renovation. Elle avait, elle avait besoin. Elle avait besoin because piscine is feminine. And again, I'm going to be putting this up. So when you when you get a chance to maybe download it or print it, you might let me know actually what's the best way of putting it on. I think if I copy it and paste it, it's not good. Normally what I do is I convert the file into a JPEG. Somebody with a little bit of techie knowledge might be able to tell me. I usually do it as a JPEG and you can just print it off and then you can or put it onto your phone or whatever and then listen to the live with it in front of you so that it makes more sense to you, okay? Um, then I said, Mes parents sont toujours prêts à payer un prix juste pour un bon rapport qualité-prix. So my parents are always ready to pay for a fair price for good value. En plus, le magasin était mal approvisionné avec du pain rasé. So the shop was badly stocked with stale bread. And you know, the French, le pain, le français, uh, les Français adorent le pain. So the French love their bread. Et si c'est du pain rasé, C'est vraiment quelque chose qui n'est pas bon. Um, so if if the bread is bad in France, you've arrived at a really bad place, you know, because that is one of the things they'd be really well known for. Um, je, ne, je ne garderai pas un bon souvenir de ces vacances. I will not have good memories of this holiday. Je ne garderai pas. Remember that they, <coughs> pardon me, to keep, garder, je ne, regard, je ne garderai pas is you're putting that into the future, okay? But it's a negative in the future. And be careful, again, you're showing off your knowledge of the future, simple tense, which is a good thing to do, okay? The next thing I said was, 
nous avons payé des prix beaucoup trop excessifs pour une cuisine médiocre. So we paid way too much for bad food. So you've made reference to food, okay? Pour une cuisine médiocre. Now notice what I did. They've asked you to talk about la nourriture. Now obviously if you don't know another word for food, only that you know the word nourriture, that's absolutely fine. It's just cuisine. La cuisine can also be called food. Okay, so la cuisine. Um, pour combler le tout. Now I love that expression. To top it all off. Pour combler le tout. Il n'a pas cessé de pleuvoir. It didn't stop raining. You've made reference to your weather. Do you see what I mean? You have to make reference. J'étais vraiment déçu par son état de vétusté extrême. Now, that is not a common word, okay? It's son état de vétusté extrême. I was really disappointed by its dilapidated state. That's quite advanced French, let's be honest. What you could say is, j'étais vraiment déçu. I was really disappointed. C'était... Um, pas ma, ce n'était pas ma tasse de thé. It wasn't my cup of tea. Uh, J'en avais ras-le-bol. I was fed up. J'en avais marre. I was fed up. You know, anything you want to say. I mean, you don't, I don't expect you to have a real advanced level of French. Those of you that do, it's wonderful and use your, your vocabulary. It's great. En somme. En somme means um, kind of in essence. I mean, if you were to get to it. En somme. En total. Uh, Pour dire la vérité, to tell the truth, uh, en conclusion, or whatever you want to say, but just to kind of say, en somme, c'est une très grosse déception qui a gâché nos vacances. It was a huge disappointment with which ruined our holidays, right? Then I said, je n'y retournerai jamais. I will never go back there. And that's an apostrophe Y. That Y there is a pronoun and it means there. Je n'y retournerai jamais. Bon. Il faut que je dorme maintenant. Bonne nuit, journal. Il faut que, plus your subjunctive, and you're hitting the examiner with the subjunctive. Now, if, if now I, I don't examine anymore, but when I used to examine, when I get subjunctive, it just made me kind of so happy because it's so lovely to read subjunctive. And it's so French. The French use subjunctive so much, right? So there you have your diary entry for the um, Leaving Cert students. Um, as I say, I will put this up in the comment section after the live stream, okay? Um, if you're in fifth year, or if you're in transition year, or even in sixth year, why don't you stick around while we look at the sample paragraph, okay? Because it's about my area. Now, I realize a lot of you would have covered my area for the oral and all the rest of it. But you know what? To be no harm, if you if you are a fifth year and you'd like to just, <clears throat> pardon me, take notes on this because um, it's going to be used, okay? And it's going to be useful. For the leaving certs, it might be good because a lot of the time leaving certs, I find, make really silly, silly mistakes. I mean, they make mistakes with the easy stuff and they can get the complicated stuff pretty good or pretty well. They can write really well with the complicated, but they let they let themselves down with the easy stuff. So maybe you could stay tuned in as well and we'll go with that. Now, what it is, is it's a sample paragraph, okay? And it's about my area because in the new junior cycle, you will be required to write maybe a blog or an email or something. And a lot of the time they will ask you to describe something either <clears throat> describe your family, which we did in one of our live streams. Describe your your um, your family, yourself, which we did in our, one of our live streams. And here it's describe your, oh yeah, it was describe your house. Yeah. Um, and here it's describe your area. So we're going to do that now, right? Now, what I did was I've actually here, you're thinking, hold on, Liz, it's paragraph. Where are you going? There's actually two paragraphs here and they're both translated into English, right? So the paragraph is only actually about two and a half lines, right? That's enough for a junior cycle, okay? It's actually enough. A paragraph for a leaving cert, if a leaving cert student attempted to give me two and a half lines and tell me it was a paragraph, um, well, put it this way, I would expect an awful lot more for a leaving cert, okay? For a junior cycle student, do you know what? To get two and a half to three lines as a paragraph, I'd be really happy with that. And we're going to read it now. Again, like the leaving certs, 
junior certs i'm gonna put it up underneath right so there'll be an absolutely no problem you don't have to worry you can just look at it at your ease what i always suggest is that you go back over my um my my live stream and you listen to it maybe with the paper in your hand and that way it can make an awful lot more sense is that okay i don't put up the um the stuff that i'm going to cover before because i never know what way it's going to go all right so i prefer to do it after anyway um <clears throat> i'm just going to say what i've said in english first okay so a sample paragraph i live in a very quiet area there isn't much to do we have a church a shop and a pub we also have a sports pitch where i play hurling and football with my friends <clears throat> Pardon me. I really like where I live, but it can be very boring when it rains. Now, that wasn't bad, okay, to translate. But what I am going to do is I'm going to bring you through it because there were some parts of it, like the last sentence, to be honest with you, is a little bit tricky, okay? And it'll be up to your individual teachers to decide, is this a bit too advanced for their particular class or whether you're well able for it, okay? And if you're well able for it, great. And if you're not, don't worry, we could put something else in. All right. So, j'habite dans un quartier très calme. All right. So, I live in a very quiet area. Il n'y a, a, il n'y a pas grand chose à faire ici. So, il n'y a pas grand chose à faire ici. So, I've actually highlighted that as a little bit difficult, but um, it's worth learning that. Okay. There isn't much to do here. We have, nous avons, remember your verb avoir, nous avons, une église, un magasin et un pub. Now look what I highlighted here, right? I highlighted what? I highlighted the the un and the un, right? And why did I do that? What's up in the pen? Oh yeah, here. Why did I do that? I did it because it's really important that you learn, even in junior cycle, when a thing is masculine or feminine, okay? What I normally do with students is I normally say to them, OK, in your copybook, how am I going to know? Because they kind of go, why is the table feminine? Why is the book masculine? Like, what's the story? And I say, I don't know why a certain thing is masculine and feminine. I don't know. It's just come down through the generations that that's the way it is. Right. However, I say to them then, um, you have to learn them. OK, now. I can do um, a live stream where I go through little tips and tricks of how you know if it's masculine or feminine, right? There's certain things that there are, like, for example, um, rivers and ending an E and things like that, right? But, or rivers, uh, the, the one thing I would say to you is you have to learn it. So what you could do is in your copybook, you decide from first year um, or second year or third year, start wherever you are now there's no point worrying about it just start where you are now or fifth year say okay in future i'm going to do all my <clears throat> pardon me all my feminine words maybe in red all my masculine words in blue because you know the kind of stereotypical blue for a boy and red slash pink for a girl okay so you could do that or you could say i'm going to do all my feminine words in green or i'm going to do all my masculine but just whatever you the two colors you decide, try and make sure that you stick to them. Now, if you don't, you don't and life goes on, you know, or else what you could do is you could have, <clears throat> pardon me, a separate um, copy, all right? And you could call it your vocabulary copy because remember that learning French, and I'm gonna go back to this, I'm sorry, it's just, this is me, sidetracked. Um, when you're learning a foreign language, you're obviously going to be learning an awful lot words right so i would say is get an ordinary copy um an ordinary a5 i'll show you i have one here right just an ordinary a5 and what you do is you basically start the back of the copy might start all the feminine and then at the front you're obviously going to do all the the masculine at the front the feminine the back or the feminine the front the masculine the back whatever you want and you're going to be working in right from the two sides so if it's a word that you, and then that way you can write it in any color, you could even do it in crayons or whatever you want. But at least that way you're gonna know if it's a masculine word, I have to check to the front. And if it's a feminine, I have to go to the back. Another thing that I advise you do is, um, and I'll go through this, I think I'm gonna give it actually a separate live stream to go over it, show you how to organize yourself for French, okay? Um, one thing that I find works really well 
is especially at leaving search, right? But you can do it for junior search as well, is to divide your copy into different topics, right? So you'd have um, at leaving search, you'd have, for example, the environment, health, education, economy, um, social problems, social issues, all the different topics. And within those, then you would have a masculine and a feminine different pages so that you know that, for example, if it's a social issue and it's le chômage, it's going to go into your masculine part. If it's la discrimination, it's still a social issue, but it's your feminine. Anyway, I could go on and on about that. I will give it a separate um, live stream. Sorry. <clears throat> Let me go back to this, right? Um, where was I? Okay. So, yeah. These are your indicators, right? They're your actually your indefinite articles, the A uh and the U, um, right? It's really important to get those, right? To say that you know that Eglise is feminine. You know that a, a shop, a magasin is masculine, so it has to be a magasin, une église, un pub. Then I said, nous avons aussi un terrain de sport où je joue au hurling et au football. Now, you've heard me before. Um, I said it the last day, right? A lot of people, you know the way you have an OU and then you've one with the accent, right? OU, accent um, grave. And they kind of go, well, which one means or and which one means where? And I always just say, very simple, very cheesy, where is the accent? And once you've an accent, you know that it's where. If there's no accent, it means or. All right. Then I said, um, nous avons aussi un terrain de sport où je joue. O hurling et o football, right? So it's always o foot, o football, o hurling, jouer a, and in front of a, a masculine, that's the a plus the le, can't go, so it has to change to o, so au. Nous jouons, or je joue o hurling, o football, um, avec mes amis. J'aime beaucoup l'endroit où je, je vis or j'habite, mais, now this is the difficult one, okay? Il peut peut être très ennuyeux quand il pleut. It can be very boring when it rains. What I'd advise you to do there, okay, you can learn it, you can decide you're going to use it or you can leave it out. Or what you can do is go and look at my video, the live stream I did on modal verbs, which was the other night, right? And the beauty of work, watching that is this will show you how to use that kind of construction, okay? That's if you live in the countryside or if you live in a small village or a quiet area or whatever, right? I also did one just in case you live in a very busy place, right? So here I said, I live in a very busy town. There are loads of shops, restaurants, pubs, and we even have a cinema. I am never bored. That verb bored, I, to, to bore, to be bored, I'd learned that, okay? I go out with my friends every weekend and we go window shopping or we go to the cinema. I love where I live, but there is too much traffic, okay? So again, some nice vocabulary out of this one, okay? So here, so j'habite dans une ville très animée. Now, I want to show you something here, right? If you look here, where did I put it now? I'm kind of getting used to this, but really slowly. Yeah, if you look at the word anime, right? Do you notice what I did with it? Well, you can't really read it from there. But what I actually did was I put an extra E, okay? And why did I do that? Because it's describing the town. J'habite dans une ville très animée, extra E, okay? Be very careful, rule of agreement, fear is important for French, okay? Um, I personally have a kind of um, a fascination with the rule of agreement. And I can spot somebody that doesn't put in their rule of agreement so quickly. So I'd be really, really... Um, I'd be, I'd be quite strict on that, okay? And of course, the whole thing is, it hinges, the, the whole language, the French language hinges on um, the gender, right? It, it all hinges on gender, right? Either masculine or feminine, because everything stems from that then. So even the rule of agreement, if it's masculine, singular, feminine, singular, masculine, plural, feminine, plural, it all hinges on masculine and feminine, the most important rule of the French language, okay? If not, I would say that is, the foundation of the French language. That's how far I go, really. Okay, il y a beaucoup de, now, il y a beaucoup de. If I see anything but rather than de after an expression of quantity, it would have to be wrong. Obviously, de apostrophe in front of um, a vowel, but beaucoup de, 
right? It's always just D. Even if there's a load of them, it's just beaucoup de. Beaucoup de magasins, beaucoup de restaurants, de pubs. Et nous avons même un cinéma. So we even have that lovely even, right? That, that's a lovely word to use as well. Je ne m'ennuie jamais. I never get bored. S'ennuyer is a reflexive verb. Maybe hmm, we like come on and do reflexive verbs because it's kind of important. I will. I will do reflexive verbs. Okay. Um, I go out with my friends. Je sors avec mes amis tous les weekends. Now, <clears throat> that T-O-U-S, that T-O-U-T, right? The, the two, it means all or every. It's an adjective. Because it's an adjective, there are four different forms, masculine, feminine, masculine, plural, feminine, plural, right? Really important to learn. I will do it. Okay, I won't do it now because I might um, only confuse you, but I will look at that because it is important. I might look at when I'm doing the rule of agreement. We might look at a couple of adjectives because it's, it's important. Um, <clears throat> et nous faisons du lèche vitrine ou nous allons au cinéma. Or we go to the cinema. And guess what? I didn't put an accent on the OU here because I know it means or not where. J'aime l'endroit où j'habite, mais il y a trop de circulation. La circulation is traffic, right? Think of cars circulating, right? Circul constantly circulating. La circulation, that means traffic, okay? So, um, voilà. Um, je pense que c'est tout pour ce soir. Uh, J'espère que vous avez, vous avez appris quelque chose que vous, connaissez pas, que vous ne connaissez pas avant. Uh, so I hope that you learned something that you didn't know before now. Um, just want to take this opportunity to thank you for all the lovely messages you're getting, that I'm getting. Um, to be very honest with you, I enjoy doing this. Um, if I thought it was an absolute une corvée, je ne le ferais, je ne le ferais pas. If I thought it was, it was awful or a chore to do, I wouldn't do it. Um, I, I find that I'm actually missing um, teaching French in CBS and Sexton Street in America. I, I have to say I'm, I'm missing it at this stage, but you know what? This is a lovely way for me to, um, to, to kind of keep it going a little bit, you know, and uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you for sharing. Um, thank you for letting your friends know. I really do appreciate it. Um, getting a lot of messages on Facebook, on Instagram, on Snapchat and all these different Twitter. And it's lovely. And I really do appreciate it. And as I say, I will be back tomorrow evening. I might even consider doing um, a thing on nouns tomorrow evening, showing you the different gender than the masculine and the feminine. I think I might do that tomorrow evening. And that means we'll be doing it for both junior and leaving cert. Okay. Alors, je vous laisse. Je vous souhaite tous une bonne soirée. Remember, lavez-vous les mains. Restez à l'intérieur. Ne sortez pas, sauf en cas de besoin. Um, stay at home, wash your hands, don't go out. And um, hopefully I will be back tomorrow evening, 8 o'clock, and we will do another live stream. Voilà, merci beaucoup et bonne soirée. Je vais essayer de faire fonctionner ce truc. Voilà, au revoir.